guys, it's Jessie from Plaid, and welcome to Modern Paint by Number, the new series in our Let's Paint program, where we take your favorite paint by number and we put our own little twist on it so that when you're finished, you have your own unique piece of art. So today, we're gonna be doing a really cute modern poodle. So I'm gonna let you know what supplies you'll need for this painting. So as you can see here, I have my 12 by 12 wood canvas. I've got some palette paper here, my paper towels, I've got a brush basin to clean my brushes, and the brushes we'll be using today um, is part of our 10-piece artist variety set. So um, these are just a few brushes from it. We've got our 3 fourths inch flat, our half inch flat, our number 8 flat, the number 1 liner, oops, and then we've got a number 6 round. So these are just a handful um, that we'll be using for um, our painting today from that pack. So anything you've got similar to these sizes, um, have a couple flats and a couple round brushes, you should be good to go. And then as always, we'll be using our Folk Art acrylic paints. So today we have bright pink, navy blue, ultramarine blue, lime green, daffodil yellow, and then last but not least, we've got wicker white. So um, any Substitutions for these colors is totally fine. You can change the color of your poodle completely, but even if you have another color that's just similar, I mean, you don't have these exact colors, that's completely fine. Feel free to um, interchange your colors as needed. Uh, you can see also then I have some tape here, so just painter's tape or scotch tape is fine. I've got some tracing paper here, which I'll explain in a minute. And then of course, we have our free downloadable pattern. So this is one of our modern paint by number patterns. Um, you can find this on platonline.com. So it's five pages, you print the first four that make up the pattern itself. So you can see you just cut out each square from each page and then you puzzle it together just like it shows you in the top right corner um, and that's your full pattern. And then on the last page, we have our color mixing reference guide. So what this is for is to show you um, the colors you'll be needing for this particular paint by number. So sometimes for some of these designs, um, the colors will be straight out of the bottle, but a lot of times they're going to be mixing the colors for our paint by number. And that's where this comes in. So you have a visual reference of which color goes in which number when you're doing your paint by number part. So um, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to transfer your design. I've already got one cut out here. So like I said, this is just the pattern that we, we have on our website. You can see it fits together perfectly onto a 12 by 12 inch canvas. And if you have a different size canvas, you can feel free to scale it up or down on your printer. That should work just fine. So I'm just going to use my um, tape to, to sort of just tack it together so it doesn't slide around. So I'll make sure my lines line up. And then I'll put my tape. And make sure to, not to cover up any lines or any numbers. Just make sure you can see all the lines you need to. And again, I'm just putting a couple pieces here and there, tacking it together to make sure it doesn't slide. It's not perfect, it's no worries. Put a little piece in the middle there. Okay, so now you can see um, it's not gonna move around, it's not gonna slide away from each other. And now we can start transferring it onto our canvas. So this here, if you're not familiar, is transfer paper. So what it is, you can see I've done lots of uh, transferring with it. It's um, a chalky paper. It's got one side that's smooth and one side that's got a, a chalky finish on it. And so you want the chalky side to go down. And this is our folk art um, transfer paper. So on ours, it says this side up to make it really easy. You know which side um, goes down and which side needs to be facing towards you. So we're gonna put this, I just cut out a piece that's the size of my um, canvas. And what this is gonna do is when we press down on it, um, it is going to transfer our design. So we're gonna trace the lines of our pattern and it's going to transfer that chalky substance onto our canvas so we'll be able to see our design on the canvas. So all I did is I just took a couple pieces of tape and I tacked it down on the top. And then we just lay our pattern right on top. And we'll do the same thing with our pattern, just a couple pieces to tack it down. So now I've got a ballpoint pen here that I'm going to use to trace all of these lines. But if you don't have a ballpoint pen in front of you, 
and you have a stylus or something, you can feel free to use a stylus, um, or you can just use the end of your brush. So grab one of your thinner brushes, and you can use the end of the, your brush to trace all of the lines, and that will transfer the chalky substance. So I like to use a ballpoint pen, um, and it's just a little sort of a, a pro tip. So when I trace the lines with my ballpoint pen, I can easily see which lines have been traced and which lines have not been traced. So, of course, with the paintbrush, you can't see that, but it still will work just as well. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to transfer my pattern. And I'm using about a medium pressure. You do want to make sure that the pressure goes all the way through to the transfer paper, but you don't need to, you know, break the tip of your pen or anything like that. It's not, it doesn't, you don't need to push that hard. So I'm just following all the lines of my pattern. It is important to note that um, our patterns, of course, are four tiles, and this painting is actually really similar in design. So it's important to note that on the edge of our lines, there is a line there that's going to be on our painting. So it's important to note that right next to the dotted line um, on each of these areas, there's going to be a line. So you can see the, um, why we need that from our finished painting, but just something to keep in mind when you're transferring. I'm just following all these lines. There's lots of really great details in this design. This is a really fun one for dog lovers or just animal lovers in general or just people who enjoy um, bright, bold colors. It sort of reminds me of like a pop arty sort of piece. So I really like this one. I think it's a lot of fun. Again, I'm just pressing down with medium pressure, making sure I've got all of these lines. And if you are using a stylus or the end of your brush at home, um, you want to make sure that you transfer every single line. So if there's a line that you're not sure about, um, it's better to transfer over it twice than transfer over it not at all. So like I said, I'm using the ballpoint pen so I can see for sure where all of my um, lines have been transferred because I can see where the ink is. But if you're not using a pen, um, you just want to make sure that, like I said, better to go over it twice than not at all because it's going to be super hard to try to line it up later on. So now I'm going to make sure I have my quadrants transferred. I don't want to forget about those because they kind of blend in with our um, cutting lines on this pattern. And you also don't want to forget to transfer all of your numbers. So make sure you transfer the numbers for your pattern. Um, of course, if you don't want to do that, you can always just use this as a guide and look at the numbers um, as you're painting them. But I'm just going to go ahead and transfer it so I don't need the guide anymore. Okay, so let's just make sure I'm going to go through and make sure that I have all of my line or all of my numbers and lines transferred. And it looks like I do. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull our pattern off. Just want to pull the pattern and the transfer paper right off of the canvas. And you can see here now we have our perfect um, design transferred right onto our canvas, which is so fun. It's such a fun way to, if you have like sketches at home or something, if you're an artist, you can um, use that transfer paper for that too. It's a really great investment. So now I'm going to let you guys know which colors we'll be using for each of these numbers for our paint by number that we just transferred. So first I'm going to have you grab some of your daffodil yellow. <clears throat> and we'll put about a nickel size amount on our palette, not too much for now. And then we're also going to grab some of our lime green. So for our number one color, you can use any of your brushes to mix, whichever one you um, feel comfortable with. I'm going to grab mostly lime green and then just a little touch of our daffodil yellow. And we're going to mix that up and see how that looks. I'm going to add a little more yellow. We want sort of a light green color. 
Maybe I went a little too yellow, so I'm gonna put some more green in there. So try your best just to match it to this color that I have here. Like I said, it's sort of a light, a very light lime green color. And this is the color we're gonna use for our number one spot. So I'm just gonna paint a little into that circle. So now we have a visual guide for what our number one color is going to be in our paint by number. So I'm gonna clean my brush off. And for the second color, it's going to be kind of similar. So you're gonna want mostly yellow, and then just a little bit of green. So this one's gonna be a yellow color, but it is gonna be have a slight green tint to it. So you can see there, that is going to be our number two color. So that was daffodil yellow with just a little bit of lime green. And I'm gonna clean my brush off again. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab some of our ultramarine, which is a really beautiful pure blue color. And I'm gonna put a little bit of wicker white onto my palette as well. So I'm gonna grab mostly ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna put just a tiny touch of wicker white into it. Because I love that blue color, but I just wanna brighten it up a little bit, um, make it a little less deep with just that touch of wicker white. So just a tiny touch more maybe for a really bright, beautiful blue color. And that is going to be our number three color. So again, it was ultramarine blue with just the tiniest touch of wicker white, just to brighten it up a little. And for our fourth color, we're going to grab navy blue, and some bright pink. So we're gonna, let's start with about a, a one to one ratio of these two colors and see what we think of that. I'm gonna add a little more pink. So I can already tell it's a little bit dark. We're looking for a nice, bright, beautiful purple color. Maybe a tiny bit more pink. You can see that the navy blue went a long way. So it was mostly pink with a little, turned out to be a mostly pink with a little bit of navy blue. So that is going to be our number four color, that nice deep purple. And again, I'm gonna clean my brush off. And the last color um, on our color mixing reference guide is just going to be pure navy. So I'm not gonna do any mixing for that one. I'm just gonna use navy blue right out of the bottle. So that one's just pure navy. So now that you've got your reference guide um, all finished, we have this great visual reference um, in case you need to mix any more of your colors. We're gonna use this as our guide to go ahead and do the paint by number portion of our project. Alright, so once you're finished with the paint by number portion of your painting, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start mixing some colors and putting lots of detail onto the painting so we can make it your own unique piece of art. So first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my number eight flat brush, which is just a tiny flat brush, so anything like this you have at home would work perfectly fine. And we're going to grab a little bit um, of our purple that we've already mixed, so a little bit of this purple that we mixed. And then we're gonna add a little bit more pink. So we want it to be a little bit lighter than our um, original purple here. 
So I'm going to add some more pink. Hopefully you guys can see that, right? Yep. So we have a lighter purple here. And this color we're going to use as sort of a medium highlight um, on all of the purple areas of our poodle. So we have this, a little bit lighter of a purple, not as dark as, as our um, paint by number color that we mixed. So um, whenever I mix paint with my brush, I always like to wipe off the excess because I don't want that much paint on my brush when I'm painting. So we are going to start putting um, some, like I said, some of the medium highlights um, on the purple areas of our poodle. So I'm going to start down here with some of the feet. So I'm going to make a line using um, my brush. I'm going to hold my brush perpendicular to the canvas, and I'm going to make a line following around the top edge of each of these purple areas. So here, I'll show you what I mean. And I'm going to press down a good bit. I want it to be a nice thick line. You can see how I pressed down a little bit there. And so we want to do that um, on all the top edges of our purple areas. So I'm going to do it again here, again, holding my brush perpendicular to the canvas, holding my brush upright. Let me pick up more paint as you need it. And I'm going to follow that squiggly bump that makes that um, poofy shape on the poodle. I'm going to follow that shape all the way around so I have a nice squiggly line that matches it. And I'm going to do it again over here. Following the top line of our shape. And then we'll do it on the tail too because that's purple as well. And this is going to create some dimension um, in the little fluffy parts of our poodle. And then on the body, you can see, of course, is purple as well. So we're going to add some dimension to that as well. So this big head um, area, we're going to put a line up there too, this sort of poof that's on the top of the poodle's head. I'm going to make a nice thick line there, again, just following the shape of the edge. I'm going to make this one come down a little on the right too, just to highlight that the back of the head. And then we're also going to make a line um, to sort of separate some of the areas here. So I'll show you kind of, uh, the, we're going to make a little dot in the middle so we know exactly where we're going to go. So it's basically just sort of eyeball it directly in the middle of this circle area of the poodle. So I'm going to start my line here and I'm going to end my line about here. And we're going to do a line going all the way around this area here to sort of highlight and sort of separate it into two sections. So if you have um, the final version of the painting in front of you, you can take a peek at that and you'll see what I mean. So we're going to do a squiggly line just the way that we painted the other shapes. We're making up the line this time, but we're going to make a similar line as the other areas. Make my line nice and clean. And we're going to go all the way up over here. So you can see we sort of separated that so it looks like there's a big poof and then a little bit of a smaller poof on top of that. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, to have this color mixed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, put a little bit of definition on the ear of our poodle too. Since we've got this medium purple mixed, I'm going to um, make some sort of texture lines just right in the center of the ear. You can see I'm sort of following the shape of the ear and the lines are a little bit random because we're going to go back and we're going to add more colors to this. This is just sort of in the middle section where this color is going to go. Let's smooth out some of the paint over here. Okay. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and wipe your brush off and clean it in your water basin. We are going to do some of the highlights even um, lighter on our purple area. So to do that, I'm going to, um, you can take the color you already have if you've um, got a lot of it left or if you want to go back to your original purple. I'm going to do this and do mostly pink. We want hardly any purple in it. We want it to be mostly pink. See how there, it's a kind of a very, very, it's still pink really. It's sort of a darker pink than that bright, but it's still pink. What about the excess? So like I said, it was um, mostly bright pink with a little bit of, our purple mixed in. So I'm going to pick up on my brush and we're going to follow um, each of these lines and we're going to go just above where our first line is. So here I'll show you what I mean. I want to leave some of that other line showing. I don't want to cover it up completely. So we're going to go just above that one. So you see how I have some of that other value showing through? We want to leave that. I'll go up here and do the same thing for this one. Oops, don't want to pick up the wrong color. Just following it on the very top edge. So 
I'm going to continue it on all of these little shapes that we did for our first one. And so for this one, it's on the underside of it, so we're going to go just above it. It's a little bit different. I'm going to go just above where we made the other line. And again, I'm just adding paint to my brush as I need it as my paint. My brush dries out a little bit for these longer lines. And then again, up here for the top part, just, oops, I want to go just above that line. Just above that line, right on the edge. And then we're going to add some of this pink to the ear as well. So we're going to go right above where we put that medium color to make it a little bit lighter just above that. And again, you can see we're leaving where we put the medium color, we're just going right above it. So to finish up on the highlights for our purple areas, we're going to clean off our brush. And we're gonna pick up just bright pink alone. So we're not gonna mix it, we're just gonna pick up pure bright pink straight out of the bottle. And we're gonna continue this process, and again, we're gonna go even higher and go to the very edge of these poofy areas, just to add a little bit of that brightness. And you can even switch, actually, if you want to switch to a liner brush, that might be easier for some people. So let's try our number one liner brush. It might be simpler for some of you. Yeah, that is simpler. So let's do the number one liner brush for that one. Again, for this little foot, Again, just on the edge to add a little more brightness to really make these shapes pop. You can see I love that bright pink color, it kind of makes it look neon. And then again, I'm going to go all the way across the very top edge of the poof that is on our poodle's head. And go all the way down and around again. And then also, we're going to go on the top of this area here. I'm sorry, we're going to go on the bottom of that one. And the bottom of this area here. To really highlight it. Right on the edge of the shape. And then while we have our um, bright pink out, we're not going to forget to go on the very top of the ears, right above where we put our last purple color, to really highlight that ear, make it look really bright. We're just following the lines that we did before, we're just going above them. We're just pulling down add some more color to make those ears really bright. Okay, so now we are going to do some of the shadows on our purple areas. So to do that, um, we're going to hang on to our purple color again. So if you need to mix it, don't forget our purple color was um, navy blue and bright pink. So if you need to mix some more of that color, I've got, a, I've got plenty here though, so I'm not going to remix it. So I'm going to grab my Oops, this is my water basin. My number eight flat brush. And I'm gonna pick up some of my purple color that we mixed. Get a nice little pile over here. And I'm gonna mix some more navy into it to make it a little bit darker than our medium color. So we'll have like a nice deep bluish purple. Put a little more purple in there. I might even put a little bit more. And if you do need to mix more, feel free to go ahead and do that. A nice bluish purple. So for this part, we're going to do something very similar to the way we just did the highlights, and we're going to go around the bottoms of each of these shapes. So again, I've got my number eight flat brush. We're going to go around the bottom of each of these shapes. 
Again, I'm holding my brush perpendicular to my canvas. Just continuing on all the shapes that we did before. So for this one, we're gonna go kind of just down here and make a little bit of a line just to shadow that. Because we don't want it to bump into our ear there. So now, of course, we don't want to forget this big area here. So we're gonna go here. We wanna make sure we have a nice, deep highlight on this big area of our poodle. We want a nice thick line for this part. Again, we're just following the shape of the bottom of the little poofy area. Okay. We're also gonna take this color, and we're gonna, um, this here is sort of like the other side of the ear, so we're gonna darken this a little bit. Just with our number eight flat brush, we're just gonna make that a little bit darker to distinguish it from the rest of the poof. There you go. So I'm gonna clean my brush off. And now, for the darkest shadow on each of those areas, we're gonna pick up just navy alone. So you remember for the brightest highlights, you picked up just um, bright pink. Now we're gonna pick up just navy. We're gonna go on the very bottom edge of each of these shapes. And again, you know what? Let's switch to our number one liner brush again. So I got my number one liner. I'm gonna pick up some navy and just go right on the bottom edges. have a nice deep dark shadow there. And we're just overlapping that color we just put down. And we'll follow that shadow there. And then we don't want to forget about this area here. A nice deep shadow right along the edge of this shape. And put pressing down on my brush a good bit to get a nice thick line here. My brush is dragging a little bit, but that's because the paint beneath it is still a little wet. So since it's not completely wet, just tacky, my brush is wanting to drag on it. So I just keep adding wet paint as I need it and that'll help that problem. Okay. So now that we've added all of the different um, highlights and shading to our purple areas, we're gonna do the same thing for our blue areas of our poodle. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my um, number eight flat brush and I'm going to pick up some of my ultramarine blue, which I have to put a little more on my palette because I ran out. So I'm gonna put some ultramarine blue. Oops, that was a lot. And I've got navy blue already. So I'm going to pick up my ultramarine and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of navy. And we want this medium blue color. Maybe a little bit more navy. We want it to be about one to one. We want it to be right in the middle of the ultramarine and the navy color. So I think that's pretty good. I'm going to wipe the excess off. And we're going to go on the underside of all of the areas um, of the poodle's body. So just where there would be shadows. So we'll start by going on the underside of the main part of the poodle's body there. And we're doing it just like we've been doing it, holding our brush per perpendicular to the canvas and then just following that line. You can see I just followed the shape of the poodle. It was nothing fancy. I just took my brush and I followed that shape nice and smoothly. And 
then I want to add a little bit of shadow up here where underneath that poof. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of shadow to the back of the legs here. I don't want to, those would be in shadow too. I don't want to leave those out. And then I'm going to clean my brush off. We're going to switch to a smaller brush real quick. I'm going to switch to my number six round brush, which is just a little bit bigger than our number one liner brush. And I'm going to put some shadow on the bottom of each of these feet. So just right on the bottom, put those guys in a little bit of shadow. And then the last shadow we're going to add using this color, we're just going to put a little bit of a shadow right on the jaw, right beneath the poodle's head, just on the underside of his little face. And that is it for this color. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create even deeper shadows, just like we've been doing. It's like a little bit of a formula that we've got here for this painting. We're going to pick up some just pure navy blue for our darkest shadows. And I still have my number six round brush. And I'm going to go on the very bottom edge, just like we've been doing of my shadow areas. And I'm going to put this navy blue just right out of the bottle. I didn't mix it with anything. And again, I've got my number six round brush. So now we have an even darker shadow just to make it a, even more dramatic looking. And I'm going to do a little bit here on my legs too. You can put a little on your feet too if you want. Just to add, make it a little bit more dramatic in these areas. And then of course I don't want to forget my little jaw here. Make that darker too. And while we've got this thin brush and the navy in our hand, we're going to go ahead and we are going to paint um, the little mouth of our dog. So we're going to start here. It kind of curves and then it curves down again. So right at the end of that first curve, we're just going to go up. And our dog is sort of smirking. You can see he's not quite smiling, but he's definitely, he's not sad for sure. So just a little smirk there. And then we're going to do a little bit of an eyelid here. Just a really quick little swoop to make it look like he's, his little eye is closed there. Just to make sure he's got an eye. Just a couple of little details. And one of the last steps for our painting is we're going to add um, just a couple of highlights here and there for our blue. So to do that, I'm going to pick up some of my um, lighter purple color. So if you remember, this was um, navy blue with mostly bright pink. So a ton of bright pink and then a little bit of navy blue to darken it. And we're going to create some highlights um, on the blue part of the body. So I'm going to do a little purple there and a little purple here. So just opposite of where your shadows are, we're going to do a couple of little highlights. Oops. You can even do some on the top of the feet. And then just a little bit on the dog's snout. And that is it for our modern poodle, for our modern paint by number. So don't forget to sign your painting because um, you have your own unique piece of art that is unlike anyone else's. So thank you so much for watching Modern Paint by Numbers. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we hope that you love your painting because like I said, it's a unique piece of art um, and we're really excited about putting this little bit of a twist on the classic Paint by Numbers. So make sure you're keeping an eye out on our YouTube channel because we'll be posting a new Modern Paint by Numbers each Sunday afternoon and we hope to see you next week. Bye!